In this week's release on modeling the COVID-19 epidemic, uh, we've got updated forecasts out to January 1st. The analysis proves to be quite challenging the farther into the epidemic we go because the balance of how many people are able to get infected and thus likely to transmit uh, the virus and sustain transmission is incredibly driven by the question, two factors. First, the pace at which immunity wanes, whether from vaccination or from recent infection. And two aspects of that, the pace at which immunity wanes for infection, which is faster than immunity waning for severe disease. And so we get these differential effects on waning and then the degree of cross variant immunity between subvariants of Omicron. So how much can BA5 infect people that have been infected previously with BA2 or BA1? And those are not, especially for BA5, are not well understood. There's not that many published studies on waning immunity and cross variant immunity. So we have to try to infer that from neutralizing antibody studies as well as the behavior of BA1 and 2 compared to the Delta variant. So that generates, means there's quite a lot of uncertainty and as we try to fit each model to the available data for each country, uh, we have, it, it, it is a, um, a harder challenge. It is a more brittle analysis. Uh, and so we've been able to do that for all locations. And what we see in those forecasts is that for many places in the world, particularly the Northern Hemisphere, outside of China, uh, we expect infections to keep dropping as they have been in recent weeks in most places uh, and then start to go back up in the October through to the end of the year. And the increase of infections, and this is in the absence of any new variant, so this is really just BA5, uh, the increase in infections could be quite large in the winter. But the infection detection rate, the fraction of infections that get reported as a case in official data, is now down to an incredibly low level. In some parts of uh, the Northern Hemisphere, it's below 2%. In others, it may be as high as 5%. But that means that this big increase in infections we are modeling for the fall and the winter will not translate into big increases in cases. But we may see a larger increase in hospital admissions where COVID is present. Because of routine testing of all hospital admissions in most countries, uh, we see a bigger increase in some places, you know, Norway is a great example of this, uh, in hospital admissions, in, this, in the case of BA5 over the summer, than in reported cases. And we expect that phenomenon to continue given the current rules around essentially universal testing for hospital admissions. Where hospital admissions are essentially a measure of uh, community transmission as opposed to a measure of severe disease with COVID since there's a lot of incidental hospital admissions, people coming in for some other cause that happened to be COVID positive. In, because of the sustained low infection fatality rate that we're seeing for BA5 due to vaccination and past infection and access in some jurisdictions to antivirals like Paxlovid, we expect uh, not so many deaths, only le just over 50,000 in the Northern Hemisphere and, and a, a further larger amount uh, in the rest of the world. We expect the, the death toll to be quite modest uh, through to January 1st. Now, if a new variant comes along, uh, all bets are off, as we've seen uh, with the emergence of Omicron uh, this year. Or even a new subvariant where there's considerable uh, uh, you know, uh, reduction in cross-variant immunity. The one exception to this description of generally uh, not a high level of threat around the world in terms of severe disease is what will continue to play out in China, where the zero COVID strategy continues to be pursued and if they, uh, and we continue to see, you know, renewed outbreaks in different provinces, if the Chinese leadership decide to back away from the zero COVID strategy, we would see a very large outbreak of Omicron. And given low vaccination in the 80 plus population in many provinces, we would see quite considerable death as we saw in Hong Kong earlier in the year. 
But that's very much uh, a function of what the government will do. They are committed so far publicly to zero COVID, so we don't expect a big toll yet. But that could change through the fall as the economic consequences of zero COVID continue to, to unfold. So that's our roundup of what's happening around the world. Uh, you know, in terms of strategies to manage it, uh, number one is to stay vigilant uh, for governments and to maintain surveillance. Uh, maybe improve it, do more what the UK has done with the Office of National Statistics Infection Survey so you know about true transmission, and to take a worldwide view of surveillance so that when a new variant or subvariant shows up, the world is ready to act if needed. Secondly, to encourage boosters in those that uh, are due for a booster uh, as immunity does wane, even for severe disease. Thirdly, to make sure for those who are older or at high risk, they get access to antivirals as needed. And then a very cautious approach to trying to look at the evidence to date to figure out which of the social distancing interventions had the biggest impact so that it, if in a worst case scenario, if a severe variant shows up with considerable immune escape, we can uh, use those social distancing mandates and, and measures that are most likely to be beneficial and minimize the economic, education, and social disruption from them uh, that in the future.